Let the music play, London. Let the music play, music panel. I'm inviting the panelists for the music panel on stage. We have Jörg Mohaupt, a partner at Axis Industries. And uh, can I call you vinyl addict? I think you're one of these few people who would still have vinyl at home. So please come on stage. Then we have Omar Sheikh, who is a equity research analyst at Credit Suisse. Some people believe that he could get very busy very <laughs> soon because SoundCloud, Spotify, etc. are obviously rumored to go public. And then we have from Napsters, Thorsten Schliche, yeah. who is based in Frankfurt. Napster, Germany mainly. Um, good. So that was the introduction. I kind of did it, I think, myself. So the, the interesting phenomena in, in music is that offerings are not usually just driving a market in one direction. While Apple with iTunes has this download model, what we saw more recently that on the music consumption that the consumer seemed to prefer a streaming service while you don't want to own a title anymore. So in Germany we love to own, but apparently now the mentality of consumers is you don't need to own anymore. It's more about streaming. It's kind of a data question. I, I would like to have Omar giving us some color around this. Well, I, mean, I think you're right that um, digital music up to, from, say, 2003 to, uh, through to 2008 was exclusively downloads, so buy to own. Um, and that market grew to about close to $4 billion um, uh, when it peaked in 2012. Um, but as you say, um, the ways in which you can consume music digitally uh, changed when Spotify launched in 2008. Um, and I think they tapped a uh, desire by consumers uh, to okay. uh, access digital music uh, and uh, have the ability to share um, through Thanks. social media, but also um, uh, through play playlists with uh, people that they knew. Um, and uh, the Is demand. Is it a playlist thing, really? I, m I remember Daniel Egg founded Spotify. It was about speed, it was about user friendliness, and then somebody explained to me I'm not very good with this music thing. I like to listen, but I'm, I, I'm not very good in selecting what to play. So yeah. somebody told me, hey, it's all about the playlists. Is, is, is that one of the, the reasons why streaming takes off? No, I think there's, that's part of it. Playlists are part of the value proposition. Ultimately, the value proposition is that you're paying 10 bucks a month, 120 bucks a year for access to essentially all music and where the marginal cost of consumption is zero. Um, so the access model fundamentally changed the way that music can be consumed and obviously, the result is that today we have nearly 20 million people paying 120 bucks a year f for this access model, uh, and it's growing at something like 50 to 70 percent a year. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the what is the what is the next year's estimate of people buying music online in billions? So uh, we have a forecast for uh, for streaming revenues this year to be 1.8 billion dollars. 1.8 billion 2014. In 14, and it was paid 1. Paid downloads. Paid downloads is about 3.6. 3.6 billion. So, so people spend like almost over 5 billion in music online. Correct. And Jörg is this interesting individual who I think. You're also a participant shareholder in Warner Music. Uh, is, is that correct? Or yeah, well, we uh, we made a big bet on music. We bought Warner Music. Um, and Warner Music is the largest, the second, the third largest the third, music. The, the third it's largest. The third la and how so big was that deal? There's, there's Universal Music, Sony, and then us, and we have a global market share of about 20 percent in uh, recorded music. How much did you pay for it? Uh, enough. Um, <laughs> Um, when we bought the music company, we also made a bet on the digital sphere, and we invested in uh, a little bit in Spotify. Uh, we bought a big piece in Deezer, and we also invested in the Beats Music uh, service, uh, which was subsequently sold to, to Apple. So we, we took a view that digital distribution is you know, a big part of the future, and streaming is, the, um, is probably going to end up being the predominant format. And I would also like to say, when you ask why is music streaming so interesting is think about a Netflix that has every movie that's ever been made. 
Whereas right now with these OTT video platforms, if you want to have a decent coverage, you need to do iTunes, you need to do uh, Netflix, you need to do Love Live, you need to, uh, what is it, uh, Love Film, Amazon, all these things. And then you still don't have proper coverage because a lot of rights aren't cleared. Um, whereas in music, in terms of the, the major label and major independent label music, with a Spotify or a Deezer subscription, you basically get almost everything, which I think is a massive uh, so benefit. So having the titles as a commodity, how many titles are there? 10 million, 20 million, 5 million? I think the, uh, the, 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 most of these services have about 25 million songs. 25 million, million songs. And how much of the majors, the three labels, right, the big ones, what's their market share of that? It's 80%. Oh, yeah. Omar, it's a numbers guy, you know. <laughs> it's about 80%. Uh, 80%. So it's about 78% last year. Interesting. So Napsters, I guess, was one of the pioneers. And I think you, you, the company that was acquired by, is it Rhapsody or Rhapsody. maybe Torsten? You can tell us a little bit about yourself. So there's one guy who's just analyzing what the other two are doing. There's one who put like pretty much everything or a lot into music and not only buys the supply, he also buys the distribution, and he just believes... We also put a lot into uh, Oliver Summer and other things. He's coming <laughs> at 4 p.m., and <laughs> if you want, you can join me asking him some tough questions, how it's going, although I think recent uh, IPO stories have been quite good. We're not complaining. <laughs> okay. Torsten. So, yeah. Um, basically, we, we operate the, a music service since 2004 in the UK, 2005 in Germany, and then since 2013 and 15 other European countries. It's a streaming platform, same as, same kind of what Deezer and Spotify are doing. So we, we are the main competitor for them. In some markets we are leading, in other markets they are leading. Um, but we completely focus on, on streaming subscription. We, we have never really offered a la carte downloads under the, the Napster brand. And how do you see, I mean, I think you're a little bit smaller um, when it comes to what, what I heard, um, like uh, revenues and down uh, stream, streaming customers, I guess, is a, is a KPI, the subscribers, right? Where mm. I hear rumors Spotify is around 10 million, the Deezer is around five, something like this. I hear rumors in the press. Uh, at Napster's Rhapsody, how, how many you roughly have? Um, I, I cannot speak about numbers from competition. Sometimes you hear no, rumors in the press, but, but we are definitely above two million. Two that's, million. That's the latest number we, we have announced. And that's real paying subscribers, so people pay monthly for the service. And are you in other geographies, or are you in the same geographies where your co other competitors are? Well, we, we are basically all in the same geography. So we do Europe, we do uh, Latin America, we do North America. And, and that's the, the countries we are distributed. So, so the Napster service is available in 36 countries in total, including that M and, and um, North America. Um, Deezer has done a different stack. They, they have basically launched in all the countries. Um, we, we, we have decided as editorial is a key focus for us. So we have editorial writers really writing article for us. We do it smaller country by country and really make sure that we can provide the same level of service to the customers in those countries. So we just learned that everyone has pretty much every title. So you don't seem to compete on your inventory. <laughs> um, you, as a service, uh, I don't know if, if there can be huge differences, maybe on marketing, but Omar, tell us, is this a one player takes it all market or you believe that smaller players, especially in emerging markets, will still be there? Well, I think we're very much in the growth phase today. So uh, in total, if you include Lapster, Spotify, Deezer, Beats Music, and Google Play, um, you've probably got a total of about 20 to 22 million paying subscribers globally. Um, and they're in pretty much every market. There's a few standouts like Japan, for example. Um, How fast is that growing, this 20 to 25? So we think the subscriber numbers globally this year are going to grow around 60% per annum. Uh, so, which accelerated versus last year. So last, uh, in tw 13 versus 12, it was up about 45%. So it's still very much in the early stages of the S-curve, I would say. So that's why we are seeing uh, a proliferation of platforms at the moment. We're still in the kind of the phase where new entrants are coming in. So that's why Apple bought Beats. 
Uh, that's why Google have just launched their paid streaming service. That's why Amazon launched their own pr uh, paid streaming service through Amazon Prime at the, uh, in the middle of the summer. So we're still there in are the... A lot of Germans there, not so fast, please. Yeah, sorry, of course. <laughs> but so uh, I think we're, as we go through the accelerating uh, uh, phase of the, uh, the S-curve in terms of subscriber growth, which, you know, will be driven by Apple rolling out Beats globally next year, we think. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, obviously with uh, Google potentially ramping as well. Um, after that period is over, which might be another two or three years, uh, then we might see some consolidation. Um, and then, obviously, that will be driven, we think, uh, by the way in which the relationships between the platforms and the labels might change. So the big debate but How today many players are there globally over one million paying subscribers? So it's well, over one, there's probably only three. So Deezer, Spotify. Uh, over and one Napster. million subscribers. Over one million subscribers. There's only Deezer, Beats, and Napster that are over one million. All the others, I mean, Beats only had 250 when Apple bought okay. 250,000. So you're, you're from Holland originally, right? Köln. But there's a lot of Holland, Dutch thing going on in your life. That is true, yes. I think in Holland, people don't pay Oh, they don't like to pay for things, right? Actually, uh, no, yeah, the Dutch don't like <laughs> to pay for things, that's true. Uh, you, know, you know how copper wire was uh, invented, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, two Dutchmen finding a nickel. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, but tell us, I mean, obviously I want to lead to piracy. Um, piracy was like the big thing everybody talked about while well, I still worked at Lehman uh, like seven, yeah. eight years ago. What happened to piracy? Is that still an issue? So I'd like to first go back to the point you raised Sorry. before. Is this a winner-takes-all market? You know, we've taken the view that it's not, uh, even though we're all selling the same basic product. The different approaches in terms of how you structure your free. Uh, there are different approaches in terms of curation. Uh, there are different mousetraps in terms of the apps that are being used. So there's differentiation there, but the raw material is basically the same. Um, but there's very little virality in these music services. Um, at least I'm not particularly interested in seeing what my friends listen to. Um, and I think that's a relatively widespread thing. And I think there's a similarity to the uh, development of mobile telephony services in the early stages, you know, the S-curve you're talking about. You have one mobile phone carrier, monopolistic, slow moving, you get to 10, 15% penetration. The second one shows up, and I remember in those days, second one shows up, everybody's like, okay, you know, this is a monopoly service, why is there a second one? Market doubles, and then the numbers three and four showed up where everybody's like, okay, they can never make money, a lot of them actually did, and we got to 100% penetration. I'm not saying with streaming music we want to get to 100% penetration, but I'm hopeful that in the developed world we get to Scandinavian levels, and for that... So at I Scandinavian levels, we would have globally 100 million subscribers? Uh, yes, in the developed world, but I think in, of course, the, so the, in the developing world... Of course, higher penetration in Sweden, where Daniel and his friends are running around and started Spotify, so right. an early mover. There you have a four times higher penetration. That's very interesting, no? No, I mean, uh, the number in Sweden actually is about 25% penetration of yes. the adult population in five years. Wow. So a quarter of the Swedish adult po population have Spotify. So one last question. Um, let's talk about the labels. I mean, I remember when Guy Hans bought EMI uh, at a very high, for a financial person, very emotional price, I believe, and that one obviously didn't go so well, and they had to be very, very, very patient. And I remember, Jörg, you told me once, well, there is a so-called bath shape recovery, and digital eventually will come. Has the time arrived for the labels now? I think the, um, the, the, there are a number of shifts, and I, I, I don't necessarily believe this is going to be, you know, only streaming in the future. There will be people who still want to... Vinyl. Vinyl is growing like crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually think that vinyl will end up being 20% of our sales. I know, I just bought a record player oh. for my daughter, one of these plastic ones. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she'll, be, yeah. she'll be turned off soon yeah, by, exactly. by crappy execution. Um, you should have asked me for advice. I'm very <laughs> upset now. Um, no, but I think it's going to be a multi-format world uh, where the uh, artists and the labels will make money from you know, their performances, from sync, from advertising, from downloads. The CD is not going away either. It will just become much smaller from streaming and from downloads. I think in the download business, people have to start doing more differentiation uh, in terms of offering you know, higher resolution formats that are less practical 
in a, in a mobile streaming uh, uh, environment. So I think it's going to be a, 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 a mix and match. The challenge right now is uh, with digital substituting physical, you know, that can lead to you know, some disruption in the industry, and the industry has suffered from this over the past 10 years. And there's also the risk of some disruption of the download business by streaming. You know, and and, of course. and, and uh, substitution. Poor and, Apple had to feel that, right? Right. And the issue with, uh, you, and what you're basically having is you're going from a product business where you sell a product once and take the full margin in one go to a recurring revenue model business where you, on good product, you possibly make money for the rest of your life. What are the churn rates uh, in the subscription business? Torsten, what, what, is it something you can share or? It, it's nothing we can share, but um, you, you, see a, you, know, you see a high difference between the different services and the way the customer's coming in. So I think for, for our service, we're not a free product and really completely focused on the premium offering and very clear in customer communication. We, we, can, we can work with a very low churn, but I, I know other companies working at four or five times higher scale than, than, than we have, what, what churn is about. So, so definitely it is about what the customer expects, what you can deliver. And then last but not least, one issue we have is at the moment we have a one-size-fits-all model with a 10 euro price point, and that's what 10 you euro. get. 10 euro. How that much are the other uh, players? Everybody's same. Everybody's around so the everyone, 10 euro. everyone, you kind of have a gentleman's agreement like the gas filling station. <laughs> one gas gallon costs the same price. So you don't compete on price. You don't compete on inventory. It's just on marketing it, and usability. It has more to do with the uh, cost of the raw product. I, ah, okay. I'm, okay. I'm so about to like say Just like with gas, it has to do with so oil. So they tell you how much to price it for? You, you have a defined content cost or defined share you have to deliver to the music industry, labels and publishers. So that's where the price point basically is created from. But, but I think going forward, we need to think a little bit more flexible and create a more tiered pricing world where, where we really fit um, can fit different cu customer needs because otherwise you never would get to penetration globally where you are at a 20, 25 per percent level. Well, I will going to listen to some music this weekend for sure, Jörg, so you, you, you sh you're safe, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Just one final point on the piracy issue. Yeah. Um, I think piracy was much more relevant in the days when people wanted to consume music digitally but couldn't access it. Couldn't afford it also. Or couldn't afford it. Um, but uh, right now, with these streaming services, I mean, 10 euros or 10 dollars a month, you know, for most people, doesn't mean as much. It's like a couple two of... Two Starbucks coffees. Two Starbucks coffees, and you can listen to you know, all the music that's ever been created, more or less. That's just an unbelievable... Uh, um, Value proposition. Yeah, an unbelievable proposition. So I think this is going to become huge. Wonderful. And, and, and it takes away the, re it takes away the uh, reason for people to steel music, which is also much more cumbersome. You know, you got to download it and deal with this and that. It's much easier. And I heard the music labels did a good job going after people in boxer shorts at home downloading, right? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's, everybody it's part go, of business. Everybody goes after theft, so I think it's the right thing to do. And we have to protect uh, our artists and make sure that, there's a, that, that they can actually make a living so everybody can consume music going forward. Maybe uh, it's so exciting, this music stuff. I can't stop, but everyone is hungry. But just very quickly, on, on the artist, is the artist going also direct? Is he trying to disintermediate the label? I mean, there are a lot of services, like we didn't talk about SoundCloud at all, uh, which is obviously empowering the artist, where the artist builds a uh, relationship with the listening community. Uh, maybe Omar, this question for you. Can the artist, um, and Sorry, you paid a lot for Warner, but <laughs> it, 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 could that be an issue for you? It's, it's a great question, and it's one we get asked quite a lot. There, obviously, there is the possibility for labels, uh, for artists to go direct through digital platforms, but frankly, that's not much different from um, what you've had for the last 15 years with iTunes. The reality is that something like 75% of all the tracks that are available on Spotify, for example, have never been streamed. And that illustrates the point that um, you need the marketing and the PR, the, uh, pr uh, the promotion that the label provides you in order to make you famous. Just distributing direct to the consumer without any marketing um, uh, or distribution or promotion help doesn't uh, generate streams and it won't generate income. So for the your artists. message is there's a reason for those labels being there and being big. So if the artist goes direct, it's more than just switching a button. 
you have to do a whole bunch of other things which the labels are doing at the moment. Mm. Oh, it's, it's, it's a whole, uh, I mean, most artists want to be artists and they want to make music and they want to perform, they want to write songs and they want to... They want to outsource the publishing bill. I mean, if you want to do it yourself, you have to be, a, you have to be an entrepreneur and you have to think about all the, you know, the business side of it, your social media, your... Um, you know, exposure. But some people do it, like Bruce Springsteen or so. Somebody, some people do it. Yeah, I think some ones. artists, once they're really big, um, it's much easier for them to do it. But you know, we have many very, very big artists that just re-sign contracts time after time because they feel they get value for money from the labels. You know, we help them with putting together the right songwriters, different artists, uh, marketing, promotion, just take away the whole headache. You know, it, there's a reason for these companies. Yeah, sounds like my job. Being a banker to entrepreneurs, somebody, sometimes they try it themselves, but the bankers yeah, you, and labels, you, I have a justification. You'd be great in that business. You, 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 you <laughs> organize great performances and you're a hustler. And those are the two things we need in the music Just industry. Send me the career page for <laughs> Warner. I want to go there. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank that's you. awesome. Go. The music.